Hello guys, in today's video we are going to see a curve reduction from the three-dimensional matching problem to the three-bounded three-dimensional matching problem. Both problems are NP-complete. We can prove that the three-bounded three-dimensional problem is NP-complete by showing a curve reduction from the classic three-dimensional matching problem. But before getting into the action, let's match our expectations. My videos depend on the wisdom of the crowd, a topic that really fascinates me. Since I'm studying this topic by myself, there might be an occasional mistake in what I say. Please correct me in the comment section below, if you wish to correct me, of course. I promise to read all comments and re-upload if necessary. Also, please subscribe to my channel, I tend to upload many videos on this topic. Together, we can answer tough questions in a better way. Explaining these problems is complicated without a proper example, so let's look right into it. Alrighty, reduction from the three-dimensional matching problem to the three-bounded three-dimensional matching problem. Three-dimensional matching problem. In this problem, we are giving a graph with three groups of vertices. The size of the groups is identical. We are also given a set of edges in a notion that each edge warps three vertices exactly, one from each group. A single vertex can participate in multiple edges. Our goal is to determine if there is a subset of edges that include all vertices of the graph, yet each vertex participates in exactly one edge of the subset. In other words, the uh, subset of edges we are using is this joint. As you can see, the set of edges of this graph represent a valid input to the three-dimensional matching problem. All edges are valid. But we can't build a solution to the problem with this set of edges, because three of the white vertices and one red vertex do not participate in any edge. Also, it is worth mentioning that even if additional edges were added with these vertices participating, we could only use one edge of the existing set of edges because they are not disjoint. The top left white vertex participates in all edges. As you can see, this one participates in the green edge, pink edge, orange edge and purple edge. This graph on the other end solves the three-dimensional matching problem. The subset of all horizontal edges cover all vertices and the edges are disjoint to each other. Three-bounded, three-dimensional matching problem. The only difference between the two problems is that a valid input to the three-bounded, three-dimensional matching problem consists of up to three edges for each vertex, rather than unlimited number of edges per vertex in the classic problem. Therefore, this graph is not a valid input to the three-bounded, three-dimensional matching problem because the top left white vertex participate in four edges, purple, orange, pink, and green. This graph, however, is a value input and a solution to the problem. The subsets of all horizontal edges cover all vertices, and the edges are disjoint to each other. Additionally, non-vertex participate in more than three edges. The maximum is two edges for the top left white vertex. We would now see a solution to the problem. Solution. We would notice that both problems return true in the same scenario, given a valid input, which might be different for the problems, of course. If there is a disjoint set of edges in which all vertices participate, we found a solution. We would now see a reduction in that input in 3DM if and only if input prime in 3-bounded 3DM. First direction. Assume that input prime in 3-bounded three 3-dimensional three matching. If so, the input is also valid input to the classic three-dimensional matching problem. And because the only difference between the problems is the additional restriction set by the three-bounded 3DM problem, both the modified graph input prime as well as the original graph, because if we merge the copies, we have edges that satisfy the original vertices, we are getting that input in three-dimensional matching. Second direction. Assume that input in three-dimensional matching. We want to see that input prime in three-bounded 3DM, if we made no changes 
in other words, no vertex participated in modern three edges. We solved the modified problem. If we had to make adjustments, however, then on the original graph, every vertex which participated in more than one edge, let alone four or more edges, only one of the edges is included in the solving subset of edges. The rest are forcefully excluded. On the modified graph, however, since additional vertices were added, we would use some of the unused edges to include the copies of the vertices in the solution. In conclusion, we just saw a reduction from the classic three-dimensional matching problem to the three-bounded three-dimensional problem. Therefore, the three-bounded three-dimensional problem is also NP-complete. Well, that's about it. I hope you learned something new from this video, and please comment below with your thoughts. First degree studies in university are all about social studies, and this project comes to encourage that even throughout complicated situations most of us are going through right now. Please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, good luck.